Isang magandang umaga, tanghali, hapon at gabi sa inyong lahat. Sa video ito, tayo ay magsasolve ng isang vapor compression system with flash intercooling. Basahin muna natin ang kabuuan ng ating problem para magkaroon tayo ng fully insight patungkol sa word problem na ito. In a refrigerant 22 system, the capacity is 180 kilowatts at a temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius. The vapor from the evaporator is pumped by one compressor to the condensing pressure of 1,500 kilopascals. Later, the system is revised to a two-stage compression operating on the cycle shown in the figure with intercooling but not removal of flash gas at 600 kilopascals. Calculate the power required by the two compressors in the revised system. So, ang ating revised system ay nasa diagram na ito. Kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong flash chamber kung saan ginaganap yung flash intercooling. All in all, we have 7 different states na mas marami kesa sa apat na different state points ng ating standard vapor compression system. So, instead of using our refrigerant tables, we are just going to use mini ref prop in order to get the thermodynamic properties of our refrigerants. So, just check out the descriptions below in order to get the instructions on how to install RefProp. In the meantime, iset up muna natin itong software na ito. Let's click Options, go to Units to make sure na consistent ang ating units. Our temperature should be in degrees Celsius and not in Kelvin because we are not using absolute temperature. Our pressure should be in kilopascals. So, palitan lang natin ito, scroll up, and then click kilopascals. Make sure that your mass and mole are in kilograms and kilomoles respectively. The energy should be in kilojoules. And the properties should be in mass basis. So, bakit? Para yung properties natin ay naka per kilogram instead of per kilomole. So, press OK. Click Options again. And then this time, select Properties. Ngayon, pipili natin yung mga properties na kailangan natin. So, we have temperature and pressure, uh, most likely our defining properties. Density, we don't need it, so we can just uncheck it. We can click Enthalpy and Entropy as well. And we can also click Quality. You have the choice to check this one over here, Bulk, Liquid, and Vapor Properties, para mapakita yung mga saturated liquid and saturated vapor properties separately. But in this case, let's just click Bulk Properties only. Hit OK. And now we are going to select our refrigerant. Click Substance. Select Pure Fluid or Single Compounds. Hit OK. And then try to browse R22. Pag hindi lumabas yung R22, just click All Fluids over here. And then look for it. We have our R22 over here. Select this one and then hit OK. Click Calculate and then select Specified State Points. So now we have our table over here. We have the temperature and degrees Celsius, pressure in kilopascals, and so on. Now let's go back to our problem and set up the different equations that will help us solve this problem. Again, in this case, we are looking for the power required by the two compressors in the revised system. So we have the power input in the compressor total power input in the compressor, that's going to be the power in the compressor 1. Plus, the power input in the compressor 2. So, the power input in the compressor 1 is going to be, let's say, this compressor over here. We have the mass flow rate at state 1 multiplied by the enthalpy change in the compressor, which is basically H2 minus H1. Plus, we have the power input in the second compressor, the high-stage compressor. Let's say it's this one over here. And we can just say that it, this is equal to the mass flow rate at state 3 multiplied by the enthalpy change in that compressor, basically H4 minus H3. So now we have this formula. Clearly, we need to solve for the enthalpies at states 1. 2, 3, and 4. Now, how do we solve the mass flow rate at the lower loop? So, if we are going to go back to our problem, 
we are given with the refrigerating capacity that is equal to 180 kilowatts. So let us just write it down here. RC is equal to 180 kilowatts. And we also know that the refrigerating capacity is basically the mass flow rate in the evaporator multiplied to the enthalpy change in the evaporator, which is H1 minus H7. We can solve these two later using mean and ref prop. And then we can solve for the mass flow rate at 1. So basically, we can solve this one also. How about the mass flow rate at state point 3? Pwede nating isolve si mass flow rate at state 3 if we perform energy and mass balance in the flash chamber. So in order to do so, we have the mass flow rates at state 6, also the mass flow rate at state 2 coming into your system, and then mass flow rate at state 3 going out of the system. If we include the enthalpies, in essence, we are also going to need enthalpy at state 6. So in addition to the enthalpies at states 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7, we also need the enthalpy at state 6. So basically, we should solve for the state points first. Okay, so let's continue with this problem by drawing the pH diagram. So we don't know the pressure in the evaporator, but we can just indicate here that it has a saturation temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, the pressure on the condenser is around 1,500 kilopascals, and the intermediate pressure is 600 kilopascals according to our problem a while ago. So alam natin na nandito si state 1 because we have an assumption that at the outlet of the evaporator, the refrigerant is saturated vapor. Next, it undergoes isentropic compression at state 2. So by the way, since walang isentropic compressor efficiency na binigay, we assume that both of the compressors are 100% efficient. As an implication of this, state 2 and 2S are coinciding with each other. So this is going to be our state 2 and 2S also. Next, we have our state 3, which is a saturated vapor. So alalahanin natin na since ito ay isang flash intercooling process, meron tayong assumption na ang outlet ng ating flash chamber ay saturated vapor. We have our state 3 over here. Next, from 3 to 4, it is going to be an isentropic compression. So we have states 4 and 4S coinciding with each other. And then at the outlet of the condenser at state 5, we have saturated liquid. This undergoes an isobaric heat rejection process from state 4 to 5. Next, we have processes 5 to 6 and 5 to 7, which both are isenthalpic processes. Ang kaibahan nito, yung 5 to 6, ay babagsak sa pressure level na 600 kilopascals, samantalang yung 5 to 7 ay babagsak sa pressure level na ang saturated temperature ay negative 30 degrees Celsius. Ang process 6 to 3 ay involved sa flash intercooling, so we just connect these two points over here. And we know that process 7 1 is basically an isobaric heat absorption process in the evaporator. So there you go, meron na tayong pH diagram, so pwede na tayong mag-proceed sa pag ng different state points. Alam natin na ang quality sa state point na ito ay 1 because it's saturated vapor and the temperature here is negative 30 degrees Celsius. So we need to solve for the enthalpy at state 1 and also the entropy at state 1. We need both parameters, this one for our formulas, this one para makajump tayo sa state 2 because we know that process 1 to S is an isentropic compression process. So let us just input the quality and the temperature in Miniref prop. We have a temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius and a quality that is equal to 1. So we have an enthalpy of 362.69 kilojoules per kilogram and an entropy of 1.8015. Let us just copy these values. Next, we proceed with state 2 or basically state 2S, and we know that the entropy at state 2, which is in essence the entropy in state 2S, is equal to 1.8015 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Again, because this is an isentropic compression process. The pressure at state 2 is equal to 600 kilopascals. Again, if you are lost, you can go back to your pH diagram. That is the primary purpose of our pH diagram, and see here, that the pressure in state 2 is indeed equal to 600 kilopascals. 
we need to solve for the enthalpy at this state point. So, no need to solve for the entropy. Let us just input the entropy and pressure in our mini ref prop software. We have 1.8015 and we have 600 kilopascals as the pressure. Therefore, the enthalpy is 424.30 kilojoules per kilogram. So let us just copy this value. So what do we know about state 3? We know that since it is at the outlet of the flash chamber, it is saturated vapor. We also know that the pressure in state 3 is 600 kilopascals. Lagay lang natin yung values na to sa ref prop. We have quality that is equal to 1 and pressure that is equal to 600 kilopascals. So there we have our enthalpies and entropies. So in this case, kailangan natin yung entropy dahil magja-jump tayo papuntang state 4 and we recognize that process 3-4 is an isentropic compression process. Next, we have state 4 which has a pressure level of 1,500 kilopascals and an entropy value that is equal to that of state 3. Sulat natin dito state 4 and P4 equals 1,500 kilopascals and S4 is 1.7424 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Once again, place these values in mini ref prop. We have pressure that is equal to 1,500 and entropy that is equal to 1.7424 kilojoules per kilogram. Press enter. Meron tayong enthalpy na equal sa 429.76 kilojoules per kilogram. Next, we move forward to state 5 and we have a process 4 5 which is an isobaric heat rejection so clearly the pressure is maintained it's still 1500 kilopascals pero ang ating quality in this case ay equal sa 0 dahil nakikita natin na ang state 5 ay nasa saturated liquid curve so we have state 5 and x5 is equal to 0 while p5 is equal to 1500 kilopascals Let's input these values in mini ref prop para masolve si enthalpy at state 5. There you go. Enthalpy at state 5 is equal to 248.45 kilojoules per kilogram. Take note that we don't need to solve for states 6 and 7 using mini ref prop dahil makikita naman natin sa ating pH diagram na ito ay isentalpic process at ang enthalpy nila ay pare-parehas lang. So we have our H5, H6, and H7 at this particular point. So let's just say here that this H5 is basically equal to H6 and H7. Going back to our formula, nasolve na natin ang H1 H2, H3, at H4. Dito naman sa formulang ito, alam na natin si H1 at H7. So we can now finally solve for M1. So let's solve the mass flow rate at state 1 first. We have 180 kilowatts. And this is going to be equal to M.1 multiplied to H1 minus H7. So we have H1 that is equal to 392.69 minus H7, which is equal to 248.45. So let's just use our calculator. Basically, 180 divided by this difference is going to be the mass flow rate at state 1. And we have a mass flow rate of 1.2479. Now, we already know this one. So, how do we solve M.3? Again, pwede tayo mag-perform ng mass and energy balance sa ating flash chamber. So, let's write it down here. Which are the mass flow rate 6 plus the mass flow rate 2 is equal to the mass flow rate at state 3. Let us inspect 
our pH diagram and recognize that the mass flow rate at state 2 is just equal to the mass flow rate at state 1. Bakit? Dahil ang ating compressor ay isang steady flow device which means lahat ng mass na pumapasok sa inlet ay lumalabas lang din sa outlet. So pwede natin idagdag dito na m.2 is equal to m.1 which is 1.2479 kilograms per second. Therefore, pwede natin i-re-express si m.3 as 1.2479 plus m.6. Next, we move forward to the energy balance in the flash chamber. We have m.2h2 plus m.6h6. And it's equal to m.3 h3. Let us now substitute the values that we know. So again, alam natin na si m.3 ay basically equal lang kay 1.2479 plus the mass flow rate at state 6. So we just input 1.2479 plus m.6 over here. Let's continue with this equation. Multiply it by H3. So, kung mapapansin natin, ito ay isang equation na merong iisang unknown. And the only unknown that we have is M.6. So, we can now use our calculator, our shift solve technique in order to solve for M.6. Let us input the values. In this case, we are going to let x be equal to m.6 at itatype na lang natin si x instead of m6 in our calculator. Press shift, click solve, and then input a relatively small number, let's say mga 1 kilogram per second. And there we have it. Our mass flow rate at state 6 is equal to 0 0.1349 kilograms per second. From here, we can solve for m.3 by just adding m.6 and m.2. So we have 0 0.1349 plus 1.2479, which is equal to the following. So ang mass flow rate ng refrigerant na pumapasok sa ating upper compressor ay 1.3828 kilograms per second. We can now go back to our original formula and plug in these values in order to solve for the total compressor power. So we have this portion for the first compressor or for the lower loop compressor and we have this portion for the upper loop compressor. So let us just input the values that we have so far. Input these values in our calculator. And we can say that the total power input in our compressor is around 70.7 kilowatts. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Sana may natutunan kayo sa video na ito at kung meron kayong tanong, just comment down below.